Hello, this is Jennifer. Lately I have been addicted to foiling techniques and I'll link to a few videos that I've shared in the past. However, I really wasn't pleased with the foiling that I was doing with my stamping. So I spent quite a bit of time and a lot of experimenting trying to figure out the best way to combine my stamps with foiling. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Now I will tell you that I, I as I mentioned, I spent a lot of time, but I wasted a lot of foil, but it definitely was worth it. And the best part is what you need to do foiling with your stamps is probably a product that you already have. I apologize because it's hard to photograph these foil cards, but you'll get to see the foil in action here in a little bit. Okay, let's get our stamped images ready for foiling. I have a stamp set here from Tim Holtz, some fine line flowers. I found this technique works best with outline images, but you can play around with what you have. Now I have white cardstock here ready to go. We're going to do some heat embossing. I want to make sure that I rub this well with my anti-static tool because you wanna make sure you don't get any powder where you don't want it. So I am stamping my image here with Versamark ink. You won't be able to see it. That's just a clear sticky ink. And then I'm going to add regular old white embossing powder. This is the trick to getting foiling to work with stamps. What I'm using is the Ranger White Super Fine Embossing Powder. I found this works best with the fine powders, but you can try it with any powder that you may have. And really, I'm just using white here because I'm using a white background. You could use clear if you wanted to, too. Now I'm adding the white powder here. Again, you want to make sure that you brush away any excess of the powder because anywhere you heat set powder on this piece of paper, you will end up with foil later on. So if there are any spare bits of powder, there will be spare bits of foil on your final image. So there I went ahead and heat set that image. So basically all I have is a white heat embossed image on white cardstock. I also wanted to foil my sentiment, so I have a stamp set here from Clearly Besotted. I love this set. I'm going to use the messages, you're the best and you're amazing. I'm stamping this once again with Versamark ink on the bottom of this white piece. Again, you want to make sure you do anti-static. If you don't have a powder tool like this for anti-static, you could also use a dryer sheet and that should work okay. Now I'm adding that white embossing powder, making sure to, to just kind of flick off any of the extra and also brush away any. So you really want to make sure to get rid of that extra powder. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. And now this whole piece is ready to do foiling. So I have a flower white heat embossed and a sentiment white heat embossed. Next, let's talk about the foil that I'm going to use. I haven't gotten my hands on the Heidi Swap foils yet, and the Ranger foils also work, but the foils I'm using today are from ThermaWeb. They're called Deco Foils. I really like this because there are many colors, many gorgeous colors, and there are five sheets of foil in each of these packages, so it's really, you really get a lot in one of these packages. You wanna be careful to pull them apart because they kind of stick, so you just want one sheet. Now I'm gonna cut a little strip from the gold. This will be for my sentiment and then I'm going to cut from the pink melon color which is just gorgeous a square for my flower now you'll notice the back side of this foil is a, like a matte silver but the color that you will end up with is whatever color is on the front here so I have two pieces of foil ready to go on to our little piece here again the flower will be pink and the sentiment will be gold now we need a way to make our foil stick to the embossing. You can use an iron for this technique, but I find much better results if you use a laminating machine. I have a laminator here that's very inexpensive. It's like 19 bucks. And I am going to use that to stick that foil onto our heat embossing. So this is just a plain laminator. You can try whatever laminator you may have on hand. Now I have my white heat embossed flower and I'm gonna lay the pink foil on top of that. And then I'm going to lay the gold foil on top of our sentiment. Now in past videos, you've seen me put this in a folded piece of typing paper as kind of a carrier sheet. This is the trick to making this work. I put it in my laminator with nothing. I just carefully start feeding it into the laminator and before you know it, the laminator will kind of grab it and pull it all the way through to the other side. If you use a carrier sheet, like a folded piece of paper, you won't get as much foiling and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Now. I don't know if it's okay to feed this through here without a carrier sheet. Um, I didn't break any rules in high school, so I guess I'm, I'm doing it now. I don't know. So I didn't find any problems. And let me tell you, I did this many times. So I was just careful to make sure that the foil was on top of the heat embossed images before I fed it through. And every time it came out just perfectly okay. So I don't think you have to have that carrier sheet. 
Now the piece will come out the other side. I'll let this cool for a couple seconds. Then I peel off the foil and then get ready to do a happy dance because this looks incredible. Check it out. You get very smooth foil results with this. Look at that. It is just gorgeous. I was so excited when I finally figured this out. Now, if you have tiny bits of foil where you don't want it, like if there was that one little piece of embossing powder that grabbed some of the foil, you can scrape it away with a craft knife. Remember I said all of the embossing powder will grab that foil. Okay, so the shine here is very smooth. In past videos, I showed how to stamp with glue and then do foil on top. That doesn't give as smooth of results as this. I mean, this is perfectly smooth, super shiny, and I just used regular embossing powder, a fine embossing powder. Now, this is a mess up. This was along the way, but I just wanted to show you that it doesn't scratch off. It's a lot more durable than some of the other foiling techniques I've shown. So I'm scratching my fingernail on it and it seems to be okay. So this is nice and durable and I don't have to worry about it rubbing off when it goes through the mail. Now I wanted to show you something else. Before we did not use a carrier sheet through the laminator, I wanted to show you the results when we do use a carrier sheet because the results are pretty cool too. So I've positioned my foil on top of another heat embossed image here, and I'm putting it inside a piece of folded typing paper. I'm gonna run this through my laminator. So this time, the foil doesn't get heated or pressed down as much because that carrier sheet is on it. I guess less heat makes it to it. So you get more of a fine bit of foiling in the end results. I think it's still cool, it's just different, and I wanted to be able to show you the two options so you can decide what you like better. And also maybe one of these ways works better for certain stamps than others. So you can either try it with or without a carrier sheet. I also found when doing this technique with your piece inside of a carrier sheet, it's best to run it through twice. Just give it a little more heat and really make that foil stick to the embossing powder. Now, a lot of people have asked about the Heidi Swap Mink Machine, which is great for foiling techniques. I just got mine, so I promise I will check it out and do a video on it soon. Okay, so now I've got this gone through the laminator twice. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the foil, and this time you'll see a little bit less of the foil. You get even finer detail with this technique. It really just depends on what you're going for. Check out that fine detail that you get super thin lines. Again, you want to experiment with different stamps and see what works well for you. I happen to like it better when we don't use the carrier sheet, but this is another option. Okay, now let's go ahead and do these backgrounds. I wanted to show you that you could do foil on colored cardstocks for a great shine in the background. I have a piece of pink cardstock here, putting my anti-static powder tool on there, making sure that I don't get powder where I don't want it. I have a background stamp here from Tim Holtz. I thought this worked really well with the flower image that we have in the focal point. I am inking this up with Versamark ink, and then I will stamp this on to that pink cardstock. Now, earlier I used a super fine white embossing powder. This time I'm going to use a super fine clear embossing powder because if there are any areas that don't foil after we do our technique, I don't want white showing up. I want the clear showing up. So again, here I'm using a clear super fine embossing powder. If you don't have super fine, again, try what you have. It may work out just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this and you get this lovely shiny tone on tone result, but we're gonna add foil to it. Adding the foil to this background is very easy. I'm going to use the technique that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Just taking the foil, laying it right onto our background. I cut the foil a little bit bigger than our background. And I'm going to carefully feed it into my laminator without a carrier sheet. I found that I got better results, again, not using the carrier sheet and just running it directly through our laminator. I let it feed all the way through, let it cool for a couple seconds, and then just peel it off and you get this gorgeous foil that's tone on tone since we use pink foil on a pink cardstock. It's just beautiful. And you'll see, I really do keep a lot of the detail using this technique. So you could use any of your background stamps to get this great foil. It looks like a paper that you bought. The shine that you get is just really hard to beat. Now I assembled these into basic cards. I just matted the floral pieces on a little bit of black cardstock and then glued them onto white cardstock note card. I also made two others. This is a blue, this is turquoise on turquoise. And then the last one I think would be great for a wedding card. It's silver on gray cardstock. So I combined some silver with some gold. I'll be doing more with these techniques in the future, so be sure to subscribe so you can catch those. If you are interested in the products that I use here for using foil with just good old fashioned heat embossing powder, you can check my YouTube description below where I will link to multiple sources 
Or you can go over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com where I'll have much more information and a fun giveaway. If this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows you want to see more from me and we'll see you soon.